compare our record with any new political party and all the rest, all together, pale into insignificance. What has the Green Party done? What has the party Māori done? No, he hasn't taken his hat off. That's the problem. <laughs> the Māori are fighting Māori for the very rights that they say they have an unbroken connection to, to 1840. Their own people are disowning that in their contest. But it doesn't occur to these jurists or some of these people who think they're going to be activists, they're going to change the law of this country, and they don't understand the unfairness when real Māori out there want help in establishing an economic future where they can be independent. We need to stand united in thought, word and deed about our future. If we don't, we are like a ship heading to the rocks. We must work together to restore New Zealand where everybody has a chance to survive and thrive if they make the effort to. In some ways, and sadly, our most endangered species are becoming people, <laughs> normal people. We're not saying the past is perfect, but much of the past is massive progress compared with where we once were. Those standards are to be cherished and preserved, not trashed on the daily basis that we are seeing today. Members coming into Parliament with T-shirts on, sandals, or half the Tiwai Ponamu extraction from the South Island. <laughs> hanging from their necks, or some ill-fated whale bone hanging around their chest. <laughs> and even bare feet. We had parliamentary standards all the way until the last Labour government allowed them to change, and for the very worst. You'll recognise them, using multi-vowel word salads, and waving their hands around like an Italian chef. You know they've been to training school, it's called communication. Watch carefully. All that waving around is a distraction. Listen to the words. We have, they've graduated from university classrooms, straight into parliamentary internships, then serving as ministerial advisors before becoming MPs, then as cabinet ministers, and even as prime ministers. The leadership and makeup of the former Workers' Party, Labour, has changed for the worse. Except those on the left are even worse. They are disconnected from working people. They don't understand the struggles of working men and women, or their aspirations. Instead, they are driven by ideologies and theories learned at university that prove unworkable in our real world. Neither Labour or supporters in the media have faced up to Labour's 2023 election defeat. It was the strongest repudiation of a government since 1975. Now think about that, it's the worst defeat for Labour in 50 years. But have you heard its current or past leader once explain why they faced such an historic toweling? what their contribution to their massive defeat was, or what they were sorry for. No, they think it's all the voters' fault. There's nothing that this government is doing that should come as a surprise to Chris Hipkins. Everything was not only campaigned on, it's in the election manifestos of the parties, and it's in our coalition agreements. Perhaps he is just surprised that a government is actually delivering on its promises. the spiritual home of the Labour Party is the West Coast, the site of the miners' strike in 1908. And for the record, I wasn't there. <laughs> Which led to the Labour Party formation in 1916. That used to represent the workers of New Zealand, the gold miners, the coal miners, the labourers, the foresters, the fishery people, the hard-working blue-collar battlers of our country. 
The catch cry was a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. They represented those workers in the very industries which have now become total anathema to who and what the Labour Party represents today. See what's happened? Where is the worker's friend now? If a political party today froth at the mouth every chance they got about the, about the coalition government being racist, anti-Maori co colonisers, white supremacists, exterminators of Maori, you could place any member of the Labour, Green or Maori Party caucus on that podium and you wouldn't know which one was talking. You wouldn't know which one was which. Who do Labour now represent? It seems they don't even know themselves. The Labour Party has decided their entire re-election strategy will be acting like a recently divorced partner, <laughs> standing back and asking, don't you miss me yet? <laughs> their lack of self-awareness is astounding. The fact is, the last three years of the Labour government oversaw a deteriorating economy, deteriorating education and health systems, worsening law and order in our streets, massively increased debt, record immigration, crumbling infrastructure, a cost of living crisis and a hugely divided society. That's not ideology, it's fact. This is tragic, ladies and gentlemen, because it's your money, it's your country. The key aspect of Vipkin's view is that what he's not saying should be looked at. It has been clear for some time that the Labour Party had a forlorn, forlorn choice after the last election. Attempt to move to the centre to hopelessly try to regain their votes or push further towards the woke, cultural and Marxist left. And it doesn't take a rocket science to, scientist to figure out which path they have chosen. But that siloed left is occupied by the Maori Party and the Greens with the exact same messaging, the exact same ideology and the exact same rhetoric. Because possibly they were educated in the exact same classes. <laughs> Hepkins' view shows just how far the Labour Party has descended away from its roots and just how they have abandoned the very people and industries who formed their party over a hundred years ago. Their focus now is on issues such as race and drumming up racial rhetoric that only serves to divide our country and ignores the vast majority of New Zealanders who just want a functioning health system a top-class education for their kids, first world wages and an affordable home. That's what all New Zealanders want, non-Māori and Māori. Delivering those four things has always been the focus of New Zealand First and is the focus for this coalition government. A government, I might add, that has a record number of Māori in caucus, in the caucuses, that is in the government caucuses and in cabinet, a record number. Oh, but apparently we haven't got the right Maori quantum. <laughs> Unbelievable. You feel like saying, well, take a look in the mirror. What quantum are you talking about? <laughs> but I shouldn't go there. <laughs> we have the largest representation ever of Maori. To call our government anti-Maori and racist shows just how shallow and impotent the once great Labour Party of Fraser, Savage and Kirk has become. New Zealand First can proudly claim to represent working people. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not so arrogant to think that we are always right. But we will keep on trying for you and for our country. We have never claimed to be the podium of truth. <laughs> Under our policies, democracy will prevail. Under our policies, equality will prevail. Under our policies, plain common sense will prevail. Under our policies, no matter what your creed, what your gender, what your race, if you make the effort, we're going to give you a chance to get there. <laughs> Let me close by making one more promise again that we're delivering on. As we promised, we are taking our country back. <laughs>